Interval notation. An inequality is like an equation, but instead of an equal sign, it has one of these signs. The first type of sign that you might see is the less than symbol, and then the greater than symbol, or the less than or equal to. So notice the difference between less than and less than or equal to. When it also equals to, you'll see a line underneath the less than sign. And then the greater than or equal to, with the greater than, you'll have the equal to sign underneath to include the number. Set building notation for inequalities would look similar to this, where you have a variable and then a condition and what the inequality would look like. Working with interval notation, an inequality is like an equation, but instead of an equal sign, it will have one of these signs. So inequality symbols, we have the less than sign and the less than or equal to. So the difference between less than and less than or equal to is that with the less than, it does not include the number, and the less than or equal to, it is less than, but it also includes the number. Similar with the greater than and greater than or equal to. So the greater than will not include the number. The greater than or equal to will also include the number. So that's important. The difference between the less than, the less than or equal to, greater than or greater than or equal to. So one way that we see inequalities is set building notations, where we have a variable, a condition, and the condition will be an inequality. So what this set building notation would look like would be something similar to this. And what it's saying is that in the blue part is my set of x's. So the set of x's, and that bar just means such that, and it gives a description of what my variable would be. So in this case, for my variable x, my x's will be greater than or equal to 5, which means that x is going to be 5, 6, 6.7, so on. So it's every value that is greater than or equal to 5. So you might see an inequality in set building notation. So it's important to understand how to read it. When we graph inequalities, when we graph inequalities, there are two different ways that you might see it graphed. One way will be with endpoints. When you're graphing on a number line, if you have a less than and the variables on the left hand side, you would have an open circle of where the number is that the variable is less than, and then you would shade to the left. If you have a less than or equal to, the difference in the graph, you would close the circle, and that closed circle represents that it also equals that number. And then similar for the greater than and greater than or equal to, is that a greater than, you would have an open circle, and you would shade to the left, indicating that it's increasingly getting larger. And if it's greater than or equal to, you would have a closed circle shaded to the left, to indicate that it also includes the number. Another way that we're going to see the graphing of inequalities is in interval notation. So when we talk about interval notation and the graph for an inequality, it uses parentheses and brackets to graph our inequality. So if we have a less than, instead of using an open circle on our graph, we'll use an open parentheses to indicate that it's less than but does not include the number. When we have a less than or equal to, to indicate that it includes an interval notation, you'll use a bracket to include the number that it's less than or equal to. And then with the greater than, greater than or equal to, if it's just greater than, you have an open parentheses. And notice the direction of the parentheses will be open in the direction you'll be shading. So it's important that you write the parentheses correctly. And then if you have the greater than or equal to, you'll be using a bracket instead of the closed circle. And the bracket will go in the direction of the shading. So you'll be shading to the right.
So let's see what this looks like. So when we're writing interval notation based on an interval, or, or an, I'm sorry, inequality, and we have less than or greater than. When you're writing the interval notation with just the less than or greater than, you'll be using parentheses for the interval notation. And the interval notation always has to be written from smallest value to largest value. And the difference in the interval notation when you have a greater than or equal to and a less than or equal to is you'll use a bracket in the interval notation. So if it has the equal to sign, you use brackets. And again, you always want to write from smallest value to largest. So when we're talking about infinity, there is a sign for infinity, and you want to make sure that when you're writing interval notation that you use the symbol. And it always has a parentheses. And the reason why it has a parentheses is because an in infinity goes off indefinitely, and you can't close it in. Brackets close it in, but parentheses keep it open, so it goes on indefinitely. So whenever there's an infinity in your interval notation, you need to leave a parentheses with it. So we're going to start off by looking at a number line and understanding how number line works. So again, we have 0 and to the right is positive values and to the left are negative. Keeping in mind that when we have a number line and to the left is negative, it goes off indefinitely to negative infinity. So when we have the number line and we have something going shaded to the left and it's going off indefinitely, it's going off to negative infinity. If we have an interval or an inequality and it's shaded to the right, it's going off indefinitely in the positive direction or positive infinity. So being able to identify this on the number line is important because when you're graphing an inequality and you have the graph of an inequality, you'll write your interval notation by looking at the graph knowing that when you go to the left indefinitely, it's going to be negative infinity, and go into the right indefinitely, it would be positive infinity. So if I were to write my all real numbers, and all real numbers indicates that every number on the number line is my solution, well, to write it in interval notation, you'll be using the parentheses because you always use parentheses for infinity. So parentheses negative infinity comma positive infinity parentheses would indicate all real numbers. So this is interval notation for all real numbers. Now if I want to write interval notation for a set notation where I have all my x values are x were less than 2. The first thing we're going to do here is graph this interval. So when I graph this, remember, at 2, because we don't have the equal to sign, we'll be using a parentheses, an open parentheses, and it's open in the direction we're shading, and we're shading to the left because it's less than 2, so it's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, looking at the graph, I can write my interval notation. Remember, if it's going to the left indefinitely, it's going off to negative infinity. So if I want to write this as interval notation, it's going to go from a negative infinity, it's starting at negative infinity, and then it's going to end at 2. This interval notation represents x less than 2. So notice here, again, it always has to go from smallest to largest, and negative infinity is the smallest value here, and my largest value would be 2. This next example, we have a set building notation where my x is greater than or equal to 2. So now when x is greater than or equal to 2, again, I'm going to graph this. And at 2, because it's greater than or equal to, I'm going to use a bracket. 
that bracket indicates that it also includes two because that equal to and we're shading to the right because it's greater than it's going to get larger and larger and remember when it keeps on going indefinitely in the positive direction we have positive infinity so when I want to write this interval notation, I'm starting it with the smallest value, and the smallest value is going to be that 2, and it's going to increase indefinitely to positive infinity. So the interval notation, you're going to have a bracket around 2 because it includes it, because it's equal to, and it gradually gets larger and larger, so it's going to go from 2 comma to positive infinity. And again, you always use parentheses for infinity because you can't close it in. This next example we have x is less than or equal to 2. So the difference between x is less than 2 and less than or equal to 2 is the bracket. So we have a bracket at 2 to include it and we're shading to the left. And again, it's going off to negative infinity. Negative infinity is the smallest value. So when I write my interval notation, it's going to be parentheses negative infinity comma 2 with a bracket because we're also including that 2. So it's very important when you're writing your interval notation to use the right symbols. And this last example here, we have a set building notation where x is greater than 2. So because it's not equal to 2, it's just greater than, we're going to have an open parentheses, open in the direction that we're shading, and it's going off to positive infinity. So when I write my set builder notation, or excuse me, my interval notation, we're going to end up having parentheses 2 going off to positive infinity, and we have end parentheses. So parentheses because it's not including 2, and it's going off indefinitely in the positive direction. So this would be my interval notation. Pause and try. So again, if you graph this, you see that it's going to be an open parentheses going off in the positive direction, and my interval notation would be parentheses negative 7 comma infinity with the parentheses. Pause and try. We're going to be using a bracket 